2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, what I'd recommend for you is that if you want to see what would debunk uh, Calvinism, I would highly recommend for you to buy the book. It's called The Other Side of Calvinism. It's called The Other Side of Calvinism. If you'll buy that thick book, The Other Side of Calvinism, it will show you every debunking to the argument against Calvinism. All right, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. So let's cover the Calvinist arguments right here. So apparently a long, long time ago, God, in his infinite sovereignty right here, he wanted to pick a selected group of people on who would get saved and who would not get saved. So then he pointed out right here that this person is considered to be mine elect. And guess what? This person doesn't even really know all the time when he... And so they're like, oh, I don't know. But then guess what? The lost person doesn't know as well. So this person is like panicking up and down and is like, ah, what do I do? And he don't know either. He don't know either. So we don't know who's saved and who's lost. So that's the thing about Calvinists. Now, obviously they do. Now, not all Calvinists are like this. Don't get me wrong. Calvinists, they know that uh, they're saved by their fruits that they will do. But what they can't tell you is specifically at a time and a place when they got saved, and that was the moment that they got saved right there. Because they believe it's all through a process where God the Holy Spirit was working in them, and then they don't really know exactly when at the moment they were elected. So the thing is right here that how they would argue concerning about this case, well, concerning about election, in case some smart Alec is out there, they believe election was before the foundation of the earth. But what I meant right there was at that moment, they were in that process where they were being sanctified, actual salvation right then and there. All right, I just did that to clear the, uh, some smart aleck out there. But you all know what I mean. Anyways, I'm trying to teach in a more understandable point for you. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. <clears throat> Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So that's the problem right there. Calvinists claim Paul endured sufferings to preach salvation to God's elect. So using the argument, some Bible believers will use the argument, why preach salvation to them when they're going to get saved anyway? And they're going to use this passage, well, Paul preached salvation to them too, and they were already his elect. Now, a very easy answer to this, so there are two arguments. The easiest answer actually to this is actually in verse 10. We can argue right here that the elect is concerning the nation of Israel. It is not referring to specific individuals becoming saved. Because you've got to realize some, a lot of times God calls his nation of Israel the elect. And if you look at Romans chapter 10, Paul even said that he, uh, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 11, 12, and chapter 9, he wished that he could go to hell for the Jews. He actually was suffering two years. That was his worst experience in life. And that was for his people, the Jews. So that would make logical sense. Now, what we can also argue, argue right here is that, one, you got to understand this. It is obviously preposterous for Paul to have to go through torture and suffering if they were already elected to salvation to begin with. That is just utterly nonsense. And God doesn't have to put Paul through suffering. When he's talking about salvation here, he's talking about the salvation of getting glory and reign at Christ's coming. Not getting saved from hell. Look at verse 10. Obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with what? Eternal glory. Let's also look at verse 12. If we suffer, ah, remember verse 10? See, enduring, going through the suffering. What's the context of suffering in verse 12? We shall also what? Reign, Reign with him. If we deny him, he also will what? Deny us. The context here is rulership and reign. It has nothing to do with hell fire. In fact, if you look up the word saved, in every time the Bible says saved in the Bible, it does not refer to being saved from hell. It can refer to like, like how we would use save. Oh, I saved your life right there. You'll find that a lot of times in the Bible. You also find out that it has to do with saving yourself from wrong doctrine, saving yourself from uh, losing rewards, saving yourself from judgment. And not the judgment of hell, but judgment on earth. See, that's what you're going to find out with the word save and salvation. So it does not mean all the time being saved from hell. you got to find out this. If, you, if it's going to mention salvation and saved, you got to find out saved from what? 
That's what you got to find out. And then by the context right here, it has to do with rulership and reign. We're also going to turn to 3 through 7. 3 through 7. Notice that the proof of enduring sufferings is not getting saved from hell. It's rather for reward. That's what you're going to find out. So their proof text, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, 2 Timothy, excuse me, chapter 2. Oops, wrong notes. <laughs> Uh, boy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Okay, there's their proof text. So their proof text for this is 2 Timothy 2.10. How this is addressed by Scripture and by the Christian argument is that we use context. They, Calvinists always stress eisegesis, eisegesis, till they, till they turn black and blue. So then you use eisegesis on them. So as we use black and blue colors while they turn black and blue, you turn to verse 10 and verse 12, and then you'll notice verses 3 through 7 as well. That's your eisegesis. There's your context. It proves suffering, enduring, and suffering has to do with reign, glory, and reward. It has nothing to do with being saved from hell. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the, notice right here, fruits. See, it's earning your reward. That's the whole context of the verse. It has nothing to do with being saved from hell. It has to do... All, Everything has to do with earning a reward at the end. But not only context, Scripture with Scripture also proves this. We won't turn there for time's sake. Well, actually, you know what? We'll turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Go to 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Then we're going to look at James chapter 1, verse 12, and then 1 Peter chapter 1, and then verse 7. We're going to look at these three passages. Eisegesis proves this, as well as Scripture with Scripture. As Martin Luther, the Calvinist's best friend, Martin Luther once said this, sola scriptura. See? It's only the scriptures. Okay, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Notice what the Word of God shows right here. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us, see, enduring through those sufferings, worketh us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. See that? It's, it's showing right here different levels of glory. See, you're earning a different amount of glory at the end. That's why when Paul says at 2 Timothy 2 verse 10, concerning about glory right here, he knows right here that there are different levels of it earning for it. This has nothing to do with dying and going to heaven and being saved from hell. This is earning a different level of glory and reward by your suffering. Let's look at James chapter 1, verse 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Notice right here, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of what? Life. See that? By enduring temptation, you receive life here. You receive the crown of life. So obviously, he was not talking about uh, eternal life or e eternal heaven by enduring suffering. No, he's talking about right here, you earn a reward, and it's called a crown of life. Why? Because you gave your life away. That's why. Okay, let's also look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. Notice right here that this total context, the entire context, has to do with earning a reward, earning your glory. It has nothing to do with being saved from hell. All right, notice that this scripture shows right here that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and what? Glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. See that? This endurance of suffering has to do with earning glory. That's the whole idea what Paul was talking about. He was not talking about salvation. If, it, if he was talking about salvation right here, there's a lot of lost people. There's a lot of lost people. Look, 
if you're an honest Calvinist, and if you're actually very smart, and you graduated from a divinity school, all right, which is not really a good school anyway, okay? But anyway, aside from that fact, use your head now if you're really that smart. Really? I get tortured and burned at the stake. I suffer so that I can get saved. Really, Calvinist? That does not make sense. So Paul endures all things for the elect's sake so that they can obtain salvation. That's the idea. Get tortured, burn, suffer, go through pain so that we can get salvation at the end. That's not the idea. It makes more sense by enduring suffering pain so that we can get some kind of reward at the end. By the way, if he's going to go through that kind of suffering for the elect, the saved people, why is that? It's so that they can earn their reward. Isn't that what this pastor did for the elect's sake? When the pastor tries to go through trials and temptation, it helps you get a reward. Now, this makes more sense, doesn't it? It's not that I'm getting crucified for you so that you can be saved from hell, okay? No. If that was the case, I quit the ministry a long time ago. All right.